Yeah, we've talked about a lot of the guys here, but one of the, the we, you know, we go through this week by week and you see somebody grow and evolve and just really, for us, you see them at an in-depth level. One of the guys that just stands out week after week is the dirty white boy. And that's a guy that watching Mid-South and uh, World Class growing up in the 80s, we'd heard of, we kind of had seen around the, the, but never on a week by week basis. Um, what what made Dirty White Boy the lead heel in that promotion? And what, you know, just some thoughts about him. Well, uh, Tony was perfect for the territory because he was from Knoxville. He had grown up idolizing Ron Wright and watching wrestling. And he knew exactly the kind of wrestling and angles and promos and things that got over in in the mountains in East Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, and, and that area in that type of territory. And uh, originally, Tony and Tom... And I believe Brian Lee, but I know Tony and Tom were working the Memphis territory when we got started. And I kind of, I, I kind of went behind their back. I guess I should have called, but I basically I let it be known to those guys that if they wanted to make approximately four hundred bucks a week, guaranteed on a regular basis, uh, they could come work for me. And uh, so they did. So I kind of stole them away from Memphis. But I don't know if if. if, if I think it was lucky that since Tony was there, I wouldn't have been able to bring somebody in from across the country, especially when we were first getting started. They could still work Memphis part time because the big towns in Memphis were Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And my stuff was on the weekends. And especially when we weren't running a full schedule and we were just doing TV. So it was an easy transition from one territory to the other. Whereas if I'd have had to fly somebody in or whatever, it wouldn't have worked. So it was great that Tony was there. But he was, like I said, he was perfect. And I always intended to feature him as, even though we had Paul Orndorff at one time, or we had other, you know, name heels that might come in on occasion for that first year and a half or so, you know, Tony was the guy there locally and he was always the one standing next. So I've got Tony Anthony teamed up with Paul Orndorff against Brian Lee and Ronnie Garvin, a former NWA world champion. So the match is good. And each one of my top guys looks like they belong because everybody's selling for everybody. Yeah. That's true. That was that 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 did lend lend credibility to that, and you know you had those two guys. I guess they you know because Paul Orndorff is a in Garvin obviously are more well known. I guess on the national scene, and you see those guys there, and you got Dirty White Boy and Primetime Brian Lee there. It make it makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah, it's some good and, stuff. Well, and and then with with Tony uh, also, eventually I knew. Because he is, he's like, he was Hacksaw Duggan in Mid-South. He was going to be a great baby face. And I just needed the right kind of thing to do it. And, of course, play on the sympathies that people would have for Mr. Wright, Mr. Ron Wright, if he actually was, somebody was fucking him around. And here <laughs> comes this fucking smart-ass Brian Lee and that fucking bitch Tammy. <laughs> and and I did the Aaron Fleming Groucho Marx fucking angle. Come to, to true life. Uh, where she was a fucking psychopathic bitch that was taking advantage of Groucho Marx and his declining years. And there was a custody fight with the family and et cetera. She's fucking him all around. Well, here's all of a sudden now, Tony Anthony's dirty white boys, mentor and manager and longtime hero, Mr. Ron Wright, this dirty, no good son of a bitch, but he was the greatest wrestler in East Tennessee history. And all of a sudden this Wellesley college cunt graduate and this smart ass dipwit that follows her around are feeding him some kind of medicine. He's disoriented there. He's listening to them. Tony can't find Mr. Right. It was fucking great. And it, it made sense with everybody that was involved. And it, it, in the end, it turns Tony Anthony babyface. Yeah. It's like with most things in Smoky mountain, it, it all made sense and told the story <laughs> and you had long-term angles. I was asked recently about that. What made Smoky Mountain so great? It was the long-term angles. It was you did it the right way. There was no, uh, there was no, you know, the, what do you call it, Jim Hokey Horse shit? There was none of that. It was. It was oh yeah, done and the right or way. Gaga or or, yeah. or Gaga. But and, and also with the long-term angles, th- there had to be because if you don't, if you don't establish history that you can draw off of. You know, when you can establish your own history, you're wasting your fucking time. And nothing in wrestling, especially in territory wrestling, drew like history. Bill Watts comes out of retirement in the last stampede. Uh, fucking uh, Dusty Rhodes finally turns on his manager, Gary Hart, in, in Florida and begins, blah, 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 whatever the fuck. History draws. 
-hmm. So set up your own history. I, and Bob Armstrong wondered why I didn't want him to wrestle because he was still wrestling everywhere else. I said, I've, no, you will not wrestle in this company, but I want you at every TV and all the big shows. But you're the commissioner. And you will be my Cowboy Bill Watts coming out of retirement. I would have loved to have been able to wait three or four years, but I knew we had to wait at least a year mm -hmm. or else -wise it was bullshit. So we waited about a year and a half. And <clears throat> with Ron Wright, you knew he was going to get out of the chair. Everybody knew he was going to get out of the chair. That's why he couldn't get out of the chair. And he wasn't going to get out of the chair, I said, for at least a year. But about 14 months in, Tracy Smothers is the one he has to get out of the fucking chair for. And that gave the people enough time that they thought, oh, he's going to get out of the chair, he's going to get out of the chair. Well, I guess he ain't getting out of that fucking chair. That's when he gets out of the fucking chair. Right. What, if was you the... just do it for fucking six weeks or whatever, who gives a shit? Was the was the idea to put him in in Tony Anthony in the Yankees gear? Was that you, or was that kind of a collaboration with Ron Wright too? Uh, I, I, we, well, actually, that was me. I'll I'll okay. take I'll take that one. Uh, just but it, that's the thing. It just started as a line. I I just I said yeah. I say you know you guys are so ashamed because the Southern boy Tracy Smothers, but they're both as as fucking country as a goddamn mud fence. Tony and Ron, right? Even very even country and Tracy. So I said, is this would be perfect? Just announce it because the people are supporting this fucking guy. You guys have decided to move to New York City and you bought property there. And then they came out wearing the fucking shit and got all the stuff and everything, and it just fed on itself. That's what you did. Come up with shit. Yeah, Ron Wright went on to say that he had to go up north to see some real doctors and not some hillbilly doctors. And they were able to diagnose him and really help him out much better than the hillbilly doctors in the Smoky Mountains. It was really brilliant. I mean, I we haven't gotten there yet in the in the promotion, but it's coming. And it, Ron Wright pops us every single week. It seems he's it's just what he does. He's that's how great he was and on the mic i wish he was alive i'd love to talk to him about this promotion and, and just his time in smoky mountain and, and beyond that because he was so good but that was oh god really he, well. he probably had more stories than anybody in the wrestling baby listen to the tennessee stud stud cast that ron fuller will tell you some ron wright stories but he just he he was the epitome the epitome of professional wrestling i just it, heard no he really was because and uh, even though he 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 was he wrestled in the boys club and amateur wrestled back when that in East Tennessee that meant probably stretching each other and you know at the boys club but he was the epitome of pro wrestling because he knew exactly how to get the rise out of people as a baby face or as a heel the things to say that motor mouth just the way he carried himself and the way he did things and he could either and and at the same time he was the hottest heel in the in the entire geographic area for 20 years and was shot at and stabbed and everything. He still worked a regular job and associated with people on the street. They knew who it was, but he could turn it on when he was doing his thing. <laughs> well, I was listening to the most recent Jim Cornette experience where Ron Fuller talked about that, that somebody pulled the gun out and was shooting. And uh, Ron was uh, saying, man, there's a guy over there. He's shooting. And, and, the, and the cop said, uh, now, that guy's a dead shot. If he really wanted to shoot you, you'd already be dead. <laughs> yeah. Ah, the stories from the old days, those are great. That's the type of stuff that just lives on forever. So, um, Jim, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we kept you a long time, and uh, I'm Oh, don't I'm worry about it. Hey, guys, I like the And plus, you, get to, you crank some of these stories out of me that even Brian doesn't get. On the Jim Cornette experience, my co-host, the great Brian Last, he doesn't even get some of this stuff. So we got to do this again Soon I will make up for make, milking you and making you wait <laughs> by coming back with a rematch quicker. And then, of course, come back too quick with the rematch, you probably won't fucking draw. Yeah, well, we, uh, Jim and but I hope, actually... Hopefully it'll give everybody a better understanding of what, that I wasn't just fucking slapping this shit together as I went and there was actually some coherent thought behind it, whether it looked like it or not. Yeah, you can see it in, in, in as it plays out. We love it, and that's why we do it each and every week. We dedicate so much time to it. But thank you, Jim. I know, Doc, uh, Doc, you got any parting words for Jim before we let him go? Well, I just wanted to tell you something. One of the things we do at the end of each episode is we give the episode a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, and we call it handing out disability checks because we, <laughs> like we like to play heel a little bit ourselves. And then we also give out the Government Cheese Award for the um, – the guy or the angle that was the hottest angle of the episode. 
So I just want you to know that in episode 55, which we're going to record in the morning, you're winning the government cheese. So congratulations. <laughs> what? That's, what did I do? You on appeared. 50- you, well, you went on WCW Saturday night and you had a stare down with the man Bill Watts himself. And you're going to win some government cheese. <laughs> That's OK. I remember yeah. that. Now. Yes, obviously, that was that time. of. We have, we have reached that time of year. Excellent. Yeah, we, we and uh, that would have been a, a completely interesting thing too, because that would have led to, um, if Watts had stayed, uh, WCW talent in Smoky Mountain, Smoky Mountain talent on TBS television, and uh, and and an early form of a developmental program up there in the hills. Wow, that's good to know. We didn't know that. We'll definitely have to talk more about but that next time you come on. Instead, everybody fucking grumped at Bill Watts and drove him fucking nuts, and he went home. <laughs> oh, boy, the cowboy. Cowboy Watts, man. Well, um, Jim, thank you again. Uh, we uh, we love doing Smoky Mountain Wrestling recaps. We do it. We, we record two every single uh, – two every other Friday. So tomorrow is actually our day to record two new episodes, and they generally air about a month out. So, But thank you well, for actually, everything. Well, I actually, can't, I can't wait to get my government cheese. There you go. <laughs> All right, have guys, a blast. I'll, talk you, I'll talk to you soon. We'll set up the rematch. Sounds good, Jim. Thanks again for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.